Please remember it's been recorded, so mobile is off so that you don't get something and out of the norm and other people may be hearing. This is the first meeting of the DPC in this virtual meeting situation. I don't like it. I prefer to see you all face to face, but that's how it is because of a little microcosm, microorganism, which the environment has sought to infiltrate the humans. Anyway. We're all present. The minutes of the DPC last meeting were approved, are online. Thank you for your round robin uh, representations. The first, I there's two items which have been removed, which are three and four. The respective applicants have asked not to be discussed. Uh, so I think we can start with item one, which is the contentious tetrapods, or not tetrapods, depends how many arms the tetrapods have in the Queensway Key Marina. Can we ask the objector to come in? Yeah. OK, there'll be a small delay because we've got to pull it, bring in the objectors and the applicant now, OK? So there'll be three additional people joining the meeting. And in the meantime, I'm going to try and put up the presentation. Okay? Don't forget to put your hand up or press the hand button so that I can ask you to question the objector and the applicants. No, take this thing down first. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Pull down. Pull down. I don't know. remind them what it is on the box. Yeah. Why does this not fit? Okay. Mm. Yeah. Can they hear you at the same time? Yeah. Francis is there? Uh, Colin Francis of Alcoba. Have you got control? Because everybody's muted at the moment, yeah? Yeah. Explain to Colin Francis what we're doing then. Pull back. Pull. Explain to Pull back and Colin Francis what we're doing. Colin Francis here, yeah, yeah they're mute. Can you unmute him? No, they need to unmute themselves. Yeah. And data would as well. So, Colin and Dieter, we can see you've joined the meeting. Um, I think you may be on mute at the moment. If you can unmute yourselves a minute just to make sure we can hear you. Yeah, I'm here. Uh, right. Good okay. morning, everyone. That's Colin, yeah? Hi. Yeah. And Dieter? Yes, I, I can hear you, but I can't see anybody. Well, I, I can't see anyone either. Who's that? Colin. That's Colin, sorry. Yeah. Uh, can't see anyone. It's important. Why can they not see anyone? They should be able to... Excuse me. You should be seeing that, right? Yeah. Or maybe because the I'm I'm share the screen. Share the screen. I'm share the screen first. Give me. Now we're just going to see where the problem is. Okay. Ah, I. Oh, I have a picture. Yeah, me too. Can see you now. You can see everyone now. Yeah. It's, gone it's gone off. It's back on. Yeah. Is it back on now? Back on now, yeah. Yeah. We're going to wait for Paul. Yeah. Oh, that's all. Okay, we're just waiting for Paul, but like the applicant, to, to join. Okay. Martin Cooper. Martin Cooper. 
We lost him, didn't we? Um, you need to go that side. Yeah. Oh, can you send a fresh link? No, oh, it's Janet. Who's that? That was Janet. Um, if you mute the... We're just going to try and call Paul because he's not appeared yet. Okay. It's Hamza from Tom Clan. Um, yeah. Okay. Um, can you unmute yourself so we can hear you? Un unmute, unmute yourself. people on the computer ah, okay. uh, hello. Thank you. Thank you. can't see anybody but yeah we're, we're online now as far as i'm pretty sure yeah yes you are we can hear you now can, that's can you, good can you see anybody else oh, can, we can see everybody except good. us yeah 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 <laughs> okay so when we do the Share the Tell slides them. or we're going to lose them there? Uh, you'll see them all at the bottom. No, will they still see the presentation? Yeah, yeah they should be able to see the presentation. Tell them what we're going to do. Okay. Okay, we're just going to try and share the slideshow with you then. I hope we don't lose anyone. Good. And then allow the object and then the applicant to respond, okay? Oh. Yeah. Hello. Okay. Have we still got everybody? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. Um, okay, so we'll carry on then. This is item one on the agenda, just to bring the members up to date, well, for the benefit of the members. Um, this is an application at the island at Queensway Quay. Um, it's a retrospective application, um, and it was in relation to um, maintenance works that were carried out to the revetment, which involved um locating tetrapods to reinforce the the revetment so they placed 13 tetrapods there um, in april of 2018 uh, an application was refused um, mainly on the basis that the rest of the revetment was a rock revetment um, and it was considered by the commission that the tetrapods were um, you know, out of character with the remainder of the revetment. So it was mainly a, a visual um, concern that the DPC had. Um, it was deferred. Then the second application was submitted um, and that was deferred in July of last year. And that was to allow the applicant to come back with some information relating uh, from a structural engineer on the works that had been done and whether or not natural rocks could be placed over the tetrapods so that at least they would be obscured from, from site. Um, we've circulated to you the report that was produced by AKS, um, so you would have seen that already. Um, I mean, basically what that says is that the tetrapods are effective um, and in relation to the placement of natural rocks, it's it, the report basically said that you could place l larger rocks over the text pods um, but that would increase the height and, and the visual impact uh, and the report basically said that the tetrapods should remain um, 
The, our own structural engineer reviewed that report um, as far as, as he was able to, and his, asses his assessment was effectively that he did not disagree with the conclusions of the, of the report. The Department of Environment has re-surveyed the rocks. There are no protected limpets on the tetrapods, um, but there are some on the limestone rocks. Uh, around it, around them, um, and there are some intertidal species present on the tetrapods themselves. Uh, the Deep Department of Environment did say that if natural rocks were to be placed over it, then they would um, require a method statement on how that was to be to be done. So that's the situation at the moment. Um, I'll just very quickly go through the the slides that we have. That was obviously back when they were first done. Um, that was last year. There's some more close-up photographs and then a recent photograph from March of, of this year. Uh, so that's the situation as it stands at the moment. So what we're going to do now is if we can ask Dieter Wood, who is representing uh, the residents, if he can address the commission. Colin Francis, who's present, will not be addressing the commission, but he's just here as an observer. Uh, on behalf of the management company, and then we'll ask Mr. Butler or Mr. Shaw to um, address the commission from their side. So, um, Dieter, if you could uh, just summarise the, the points that you want to raise um, for the commission to consider, please. Uh, yes. Good, mo good morning, um, Mr. Chairman, Government Ministers, members of the DPC. Thank you for allowing me to address you with regard to this planning application. My name is Dieter Wood and I speak on behalf of the objector, Lagoon Management, who have legal interest in the land on which the concrete structures are sited. I have a diploma in town planning and I'm a former member of the Royal Town Planning Institute. I'm now retired. This is the third time in two years that you had this proposal brought before you and three years since the unsightly concrete blocks were dumped into the sea by an experienced property developer who must have known that planning permission was required. This is not the first time that the same experienced developer has had to submit a retrospective town planning application due to the fact that they carried out development works without first obtaining planning approval. This is most annoying for the majority of us who are law abiding, who have put up with this type of behavior from an irresponsible minority. I would be interested to hear from the applicant as to the reasons for not applying for town planning permission before carrying out this work. The original planning application was, as you said, refused, and the second is pending more information on the engineer uh, report on the on the blocks. Their benefits, the revertment, stability, and whether they could be covered by natural lock. Unfortunately, the review submitted by the applicant's agent fails to identify the author of the review and their professional status and experience. The review claims that the structures are tetrapods, which can be used in coastal engineering. Tetrapods are normally produced from a scientifically developed mould having four legs, as defined by the word tetrapod, being a creature with four legs. The blocks in place in the marina have six legs and are homemade without any scientific certification. The review has not provided any scientific evidence to support the claim that the blocks have strengthened the revertment. The review fails to answer the questions raised when this application was last considered by the DPC, other than the height of the revertment would be increased and cause more of a visual impact if the natural block, natural stones were placed above, over the, the, the concrete blocks. The review fails to examine the suggestion put forward by Lagoon to recreate the structures and chains onto the seabed so they could not be visible and place natural rocks on top rather than increase the height of the revertment. The blocks and their associated rusty chains remain an eyesore being located in the beautiful and highly visually sensitive area of Queensway Quay, being clearly visible from the westward viewing platform 
located on the bridge linking the island with Ordnance Wharf. It is worthy of note that the revertment spur to the north of the island is constructed of natural rock, and to use a different material to the south of, of the island creates a visual imbalance and may set a precedent for further similar structures to be deposited in and around this highly visually sensitive location. The retrospective planning application now being considered is identical to the planning application previously submitted, which was unanimously rejected by the Commission on the 25th of April 2018, time, when the yeah. Commission agreed that the applicant would have to give the the law. At the time, the DO, the Department of Environment and Climate Change, commented that the natural rocks were preferred. Nothing has changed since then. The only reason the blocks are still in place is because the applicant chose to carry out these works without planning permission. In the interest of good order, no advantage should be given to a retrospective planning application. Therefore, in view of the applicant's reluctance to place the blocks on the seabed with natural rocks above, this, com this commission should now have no hesitation in demanding that the structures are removed and replaced with matching natural stone as originally recommended by the Department of Engineering and Climate Change. Thank you for allowing me to address the commission. Um, thank you, Mr. Wood. Does any member of the commission want to ask questions to the objective, please? Has anybody put Does anyone ask? No. Nobody, not. Nobody wants to say something to Mr. Wood? Okay. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Can we have the to make representations, please? Uh, ministers, uh, ladies, gentlemen, uh, good morning. Uh, I'm Eric Shaw and I'm speaking on behalf of Queensway Key. Uh, I thank Mr. Woods for his comments and what he's done. From the planning point of view, obviously, that's got absolutely nothing to do with me. Reference all the aesthetics, because it seems to be that's just what we are actually talking about. Uh, the object has been missed that what was happening was maintenance. We had a very, very large storm. Yeah, and we've had storms here before that annually flooded offices in the north end of Queensway Quay. But in the development of Queensway Quay, which the Elping Hand and Gons have made suggestions to and Queensway Quay have followed them. But in 2008, we had a very bad storm. And down to the north, as it were, we were really worried about having a building come down because it was being underscored by this storm. The same thing was happening at Queensway Quay on this extension by the bridges. It pushed all the boulders down underneath. What was happening is the revertment wall, the way the revertment wall works, because uh, in truth, they're cheap aesthetic stones, whereas tetrapods, as they call them, and this has got six legs. I'll explain very briefly why it's got six legs. Tetrapods, you have to go through the licensing authority for the people that actually did it. But if you add legs to it, it hasn't uh, got to go through the licensing. And it is half the size and half the weight, and it's designed specifically to help marine life. The pictures that you actually saw didn't show the ones that went down that have holes all the way through them very much similar to the way we did the reefy off the airport, but we can't see reefy because it's under the water. These uh, Gibraltar stars were designed to protect and break up the waters. Uh, what's happening with tetrapods as of late is, a lot of people may not remember, but at the back of the Nuffield pool, there was a concrete factory there that churned them out by the dozen. If you look over the wall, down there at the Ruffield Pool, you will see hundreds of them protecting a straight sheer wall from the waves that come in. It breaks them down and it adjusts itself and stops damage. We did exactly the same here by putting out the Gibraltar star to actually break the waves up. The waves have to be broken down when they come ashore. 
with the rocks that we've actually got now, and you can go down and have a look if you like, all the way down to uh, the other end of uh, the dockyard itself, waves roll up and they underscore, they're not broken down. This spur that goes out is to break down the waves that come across at an angle that has now been brought about by the deflection because the landmass came out in Algeciras over a kilometre and changed the angle of reflection, which caused the problem in 2008 and caused the problem here at Queensway Quay. To get around it in Queensway Quay, they've put in the Gibraltar Star that breaks it down. It is uh, an experiment, you might say, that was being fed at one stage to the government, and there are a couple of government ministers who know all about it anyway. And <coughs> The next big thing that we've got a problem with here, we want them removed, and it's just aesthetics actually, which is, from my point of view, is frivolous, superficial, and a little bit tenacious to worry about something being aesthetic. I don't think any of you have actually gone down there and seen it. I don't think any of you have taken into consideration the people that actually live down there on the island. Well, I have. I've been watching and working with Queensway Key Management since the onset of the island, trying to get a prid pro quo for the marine life and natural history. And they've worked very, very well uh, with us at this particular moment in time. And what we are is we're walking kind of hand in hand. If you go down there, not only have you got to go to the edge, right up to the fence and look over it before you see this abomination, which it makes it sound like from the other gentleman that was speaking. It's just aesthetics. Uh, aesthetics are one thing, but whether we like it or not, the sea and those close to it need our help, not objections that have no actual point in it. And the final point to all of this, in the last Ocean Day that was taking place down here at Queensway Quay, the Ministry himself came down and uh, had a look around, as he does with all the different things that happen around marine habitats. And he came out and had a look. And one of his comments, and this is the only comment I can put to the board and those that understand it at the moment, is ferruginae pectinaferis on it and date mussels are in and around it. But on the star itself, ferruginae has moved in and is living and grazing very well on it. And to quote the minister at the time, because this is a globally protected species. He said, oops, if they're already in it, everybody's a little bit too late. We can't do anything about it now. So from my point of view, not just Queensway Key's point of view, for this species, which is globally protected, and Gibraltar happens to be a prime area for this particular species, as and where in material of what the numbers are, we must protect. But in truth, when it actually comes to protecting the marine habitat and the coastal habitat, for me, the Gibraltar Star does both. Uh, if you've got any questions, please ask me. Thank you, Eric Shaw. May I have members of the Commission to ask Thank questions you. to the applicant, please? Any questions? Anybody else? No one has any questions? Uh, I have yes, Hello. Um, Janet, Janet. Can you hear me? Hi, good morning. Yes. Eric, good morning, Peter. Hello. Um, thank you for uh, explaining both sides very, very clearly. Um, it's very difficult actually discussing this in this format. Uh, but uh, I think, you know, we're talking about retrospective planning applications and um, also reading the submission, the recent submission by Clive Chris from the Department of Environment, I think it was March this year, still sort of looking at the benefits of this and that. And it just strikes me that um, while the choice of material and the action may be necessary um, at the time, that uh, full uh, cooperation with the Department of Environment and the planning process 
should have been followed instead of where we are today, where we're looking back at what's happened and there continues to be queries even from the Department of Environment about further studies that need to be done. And it's, perhaps it's more of the process um, that's at stake here. Uh, well, uh, from planning information and how it works, uh, I don't understand that side of it, to be perfectly honest, and I wasn't made aware of it. What I was made aware of and what was happening at the time is it was maintenance work from damage that had already been caused by a storm. And maintenance is one thing. Uh, rebuilding and asking for planning permission to change something is another. All they have done is, with this different material that will break down waves, is replace what the storm took away. If they needed plan information for that maintenance, yeah, <laughs> I wouldn't know. I'm a biologist. You may not, you may, you may not have known Eric absolutely, but um, your colleague next to you would know uh, that that these processes are necessary. Um, but I take your point. Thanks. Thank you, Janet. Any other member wants to ask a question? My, my question to the applicant is, two years on since the structures have been put in place, um, has the wave action been mitigated in those two years? Has any well, state have that? Am I to answer? Yes, please. Uh, oh, yeah. The wave action has been totally mitigated. Everything's uh, breaking down now. Where we used to have rolling waves coming up and splashing against the wall and even getting the office wet, it's now breaking down. The waves, you've only got to come along and ski when there's a, a large swell and you see anything that it's a shape like this. It is broken down. It's not lifting up and rolling over it which the revertment wall, in its name, tells you exactly what it is, it reverted. But there's nothing to break down large waves. These Gibraltar stars at the end of this, prior to it hitting, break the wave. And, well, four or five metres to the other side, there is nothing. Thank you. Does any other member want to ask questions to the applicant, please? Thank you all. Uh, now we'll do a summary of the report. Um, I may, may make my own recommendations to you members and then take a vote. I think maybe part of this process today in this application. Thank you. Paul, may we have your report, please? Yeah, just to, to summarize then, I mean, I think both sides have presented their arguments very clearly. Um, I don't think anyone is contesting the effectiveness of these um, star blocks or tetrapods, whatever you, the proper term is. Um, so I don't think there's any any issue there. Um, it's mainly, and I know Mr. Shaw um, doesn't think aesthetics are important, but obviously for the Commission I'm a, they, they are important. Um, and it's to do obviously not only with the effectiveness of the revetment, but also the aesthetics of the of the revetment itself. Um, and that really it's a decision for the Commission to make now and whether they want to just um, accept what has been done and grant permission on that basis or whether they want um, or they consider that some, something else should be done in its place. So really it's up to up to only the members and obviously if you have any any views that you want to express, and uh, now the time to, to do that. Minister Cortes, for example. Mr. Cortes. Yeah, thank you. Uh, hello, everyone. Um, yeah, just, just to clarify, because Eric referred to uh, a visit that I made there a year or two ago. I think it's two years ago, actually. Um, and I did see marine life on these uh, Gibraltar stars, as they've been called. Um, I. I think what Eric has implied that I uh, meant to say that, you know, it didn't now need planning permission is not, I think, a correct interpretation because clearly that is what the Commission is here to decide. My comment was purely on the fact that there was marine life on it. And in fact, the survey by the Department of the Environment has seen marine life on it and um, has determined that 
the introduction of the structures did not adversely affect the, the ecology. I think, I think the point is not so much as to whether it's good or not for marine life. It will be colonized by marine life. Uh, rock is probably better, but it uh, uh, so hasn't had an adverse effect. Um, I, think the, I think the point is whether um, uh, it was legitimate maintenance, uh, which, or whether it was something new that needed to, to have planning permission. Um, and that is for the Commission to determine, uh, and I think that is independent of the ecological arguments. Um, but the Commission has to consider one thing, and that is will the cure be worse than the actual disease? And uh, in taking this decision, we would have to see what would be done to um, remove the visual impact, if such there is. If you can't see it from most places. You can see it from the bridge, but the bridge is only frequented by a few people. But but anyway, whether whether the, the cure in in making it um, more visually pleasing, be it by putting rocks on top or by removing these, is going to be worse than than what we have now, and that is what the commission has to consider. Okay. Um, my view is that um, the government itself suffered the same consequences of um, the wave action in that year. If I recall right, I had to make correct me. Otherwise, the revetment in West Side, Euro Plaza, and uh, Westview Park Promenade were equally affected. They were not subject to planning permission because the government itself. <laughs> repaired and maintained the same aesthetics of the rocks and the same use of rocks. So the natural engineering and the aesthetic looks of that revetment was re-maintained and reinforced using the same material and finishes. In this case, I, as planners, I think we have to accept that they had to take mitigating action to avoid the rocks being driven away into the sea again and the tetrapods are seem to be an, a satisfactory engineering solution but as planners i think the the fact that they've changed the configuration of the the rocks itself the, the material of the rocks and the fact that it does make it aesthetically displeasing compared to the natural rock i think uh, planning permission would have been required the method of rocks is not the same it's tetrapod so they would have required building operation requirements and consent from engineering point of view and from planners point of view and my recommendations to the commission would be if the tetrapods are satisfactory accept them to be there but the applicants be conditioned that they be dressed up above uh, with the natural rock so that it becomes aesthetically pleasing from the bridge i have to say to the minister that the, the bridge is public it's a public right of way all the way into the marina so it's not just a selector few who lives in the area but the whole public of Gibraltar can visit the area and uh, appreciate or not this current situation so my recommendations to the commission would be to vote in favor of keeping the tetrapods but condition the applicant to have uh, the rocks as part of the above the sea level uh, finish Any comments, please? Paul, can I comment? Who's that? John. Yes, John. please. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it, yeah, of course it's open to the public, but uh, it, it's not very often frequented by the public. But anyway, that, that's, that's a side point. Um, um, if, if that is the Commission's decision, then clearly the works would have to be subjected to an assessment uh, as I say, so to make sure that the cure isn't uh, detrimental um, and it's got to be done uh, in, in a, 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 a proper fashion and there would have to be an assessment um, made and a proposal made as to how the works would be carried out.
Yes, and it also comes with the DOA requirement of a method statement for marine life protection. That's what you're saying. Yeah. Does anybody in the membership want to raise any other comments uh, so that we can take a decision, please? You're all silent. <laughs> <laughs> I can't see your faces because it's on a small screen on our side, so... Um, <laughs> Can we remove this one? Yeah, we're going to, okay. we're going to try and swap that over. Okay, um, do we need a big screen to take a vote? Do you all want to take a vote? We are happy with the recommendation. If it's up, the three of you in the same room are happy? Yeah. yeah. I'm happy. Okay, so can we take it as a unanimous decision to approve the tetrapods? with the applicant submitting as a condition, the requirement to dress it up with natural rock and yep. DOE requirements, obviously part of that. Yep. Is that unanimous? Yes. Yes. Yep. Thank so. you. That's a fantastic decision. Thank you very much. We'll be communicating this to the applicant in due course with its proper setup in writing. And um, I thank you for the intervention. We are now going to Miss out on Dieter Wood, Mr. Colin Francis, and Mr. Butler. They'll be out of the meeting now. Yeah. And, and it'll be a membership only meeting because the rest of the items have no applicants or objectors. Okay. Thank you, Eric Shaw. Sorry, I forgot your name. Have a good day. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, and we're just going to make a small adjustment here because it's probably easier if we swap our screens around. So if you can hang on one second, I think that's better. Isn't it? Oh. Are we now? If you if you can watch it here and you see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can see this screen. Can they see the screen? Can it? Well, how do they see this? They are seeing this. Okay. Oh. Um. Okay, so now we move on to item two, which is Devil's Sang mostly story development. Um, the reason why we have it here is because that subcommittee, um, second, it was this, uh, sorry. One, one second, we just trying to sort this out. Sorry, come again. Okay, so we're making some adjustments on the hood. Oops. <laughs> Share screen, sharing screen on the so they all. Uh, can we put the teams up there? Everyone, I see the faces. Can we just have this slide here? And I see the faces there. Yeah, I just now. Please, it's on to exchange. Hmm? Yeah, yeah better to see the faces. Yeah, because we don't need to see it. Okay, you're now on our wait, big wait, screen. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> Why? Because the, they need to be able to see the... Yeah, I'm just explaining. No? Oh, okay. okay. You're now on our big screen, so I can see you all, and we'll use the, the laptop for the visuals on our side. Okay. Keith, there's no coffee on your side for MPS, eh? That's sad. <laughs> see, you automatically put it down. I can't do it. No. Okay. So I have to go back to everyone. <laughs> okay. We won't be able to do it. Before. No. Okay. Okay. Whatever. Um, the reason why. Wait, wait, wait. No. You haven't started the presentation. Yeah. 
Okay, the reason why item two is on the agenda is because our subcommittee, um, Claire Montado, recorded our objections to the extension of the validity of the expiry date of this outline application because she recalled that as her membership, she objected to it in the first run in the proper meeting of the DPC. So because of that, it's on the agenda. And therefore, I would want the membership to decide and vote in favour or not of this outline being renewed um, for another year. And basically, there are reasons satisfying that from on behalf of the applicants. Both on behalf of those reasons. Sorry? Do we have any reasons? Yeah, sorry. The, um, basically, the applicant asked to renew the, app the application. Uh, there was a letter circulated to you. But essentially, they were uh, discussing with government certain aspects and also working on um, working up the scheme to a full planning application stage. It's been kind of overtaken by events because they have now submitted the full application, okay. um, but we would still, or they would still want the um, request to be considered in terms of extending the outline application in any event. Uh, yeah. yeah. So there's because, obviously no change. Because there's no change in the actual submission in outline at this stage, and because it was a vote in the last decision, can we all please take a vote on this one and allow the applicant to have a, a renewed outline application? First of all, please. Um, obviously, you'll have a view of the full plan application as and when it's processed and considered later on in the year by the Commission. Um, I don't know whether you recall who voted in favour yourselves. Uh, I think as planners we did in favour. So I'll raise my hand. You're going to have to say it so that we know. Okay, so Paul Rigo, Chairman, votes in favour. And I'll go in turn each one of you so that you can... Can, can I make a comment? Yeah, can I, I make a comment. Okay, sorry. Yeah, I'll tell you what my, my, my worry is. Um, Precisely because it's unchanged, uh, because since uh, we granted outline permission, the law has changed in relation to energy performance. And now they have to be near zero energy. And therefore, in taking a precise act action today, uh, we now have to conform to the current law. And I don't know, and, and I need to be convinced that the plans as submitted actually conform to the new law. Um, so I have a legal concern there. I respond to that, Minister, that because they are asking for a renewal, we can also add that condition to the outline, irrespective of whether they jump the gun in submission of the full planning application. Then, then so, I think that we should just put in a general comment to say that or maybe at, at at full planning they will be expected to conform to current law and we should point out that it's energy performance so that they are aware that they have to satisfy us at the time uh, i vote in favor of that does any other member of the commission we, we vote otherwise I, i'd like to say something minister garcia then keith please Right. The, for a couple of things. First of all, I think to thank the town planning department and uh, the digital services department for getting this uh, going online. It's not the same as meeting in person. I think it take it'll take some getting used to. It's a new format. It's different. But I think we we managed in in a sense to to make it work this morning. So well done. Yes. Thank you to to everyone. Secondly, I think I understand there is no change in terms of the design and the the application that has been submitted now for outline uh, renewal. But I think that there has been one change in material circumstances over the last sort of few months, and that change is the general election that took place in October. The government is now committed to a policy of green Gibraltar, which 
obviously, although we were, we've always been very environmentally uh, considered, uh, very, very proud in considering environmental issues. Now this is a set of green Gibraltar policy we have laid out in the new manifesto. And I think there are now issues of uh, design, of massing and of heights that we would need to consider in the context of what the new policy is. So I understand you've, you've, just, you've already said they submitted a full planning application, which to a degree overtakes what may happen with this one. But there is, uh, for me at least, a change in material circumstances, which, which are which is a change that I have just explained to the Commission, and we need to see how that now fits in with this request uh, for renewal. May I comment, uh, Mr. Chairman? I had key first. Do you mind, please? Uh, okay, well, this is specifically on uh, the Deputy Chief Minister's points. Okay. Yeah, uh, clearly, I totally agree. Um, and I think that it may be that if the formal, the full planning application is there and valid anyway, that it may not be necessary for us to extend the outline if the full one has been admitted. I just wanted a, a, an opinion on whether that is in fact the case. We, we can do both. It's yeah. open to us to decide whether we want to renew the outline um, there's nothing in law stopping us from doing that. We can do either, in other words. Yes. Okay, thank you. Keith, can I have your views, please? Yeah, I, have, I haven't actually raised my hand, but I, I may as well say that, uh, that at the time, Dons was very concerned about the, the um, increasingly obvious effect that these glass facades have on... Uh, migrating birds, especially those that migrate at night, and that those those concerns haven't changed. In fact, they're, they're even more acute. I'd like to say something. Carry on. Okay. okay. Um, I um, very much welcome um, the Green uh, Initiative John has outlined, and also uh, Joseph, um, really welcome hearing that. Uh, when when this came before DPC, uh, the three NGOs, I think, raised lots of concerns as well. Um, and if this project is going forward unchanged, then I think we would definitely uh, have raised those concerns very strongly anyway um, on massing, on the use of glass, obviously on the birds, and the impacts on the character of the old town. I think all these um, uh, issues are still very valid also from the planning side of things. Um, it did have a lot of positive aspects to it. I think with the use of the ground level, you know, social opening and, and tidying up of that area and and at certain quarters the building almost disappeared. So it really yeah, it was a very interesting project linking also the cruise liner route through to town. Um, a lot of thought has gone into it, but I totally concur with the, the comments that all uh, the members have made. Um, from the planner's point of view, the application as you see visually on screen is that the ultimate discussion we had and decision we took on height massing of the energy issues of the traffic circulation pedestrian flows and that was the ultimate decision we took even though it was a vote not wasn't unanimous the applicant uh, was given an outline planning permission i have to say that no disrespect to the manifesto commitment but the development plan is still active 2019 and still allows this high-rise developments extra moves i.e. outside the city walls as, as a result of pressure on the old town um, we have similar developments happening in the near future like chatham uh, muse is it called chatham views yeah. chatham views just opposite the, just opposite city walls these are high-rise developments which we need to oh, keep in oh, mind okay um, we can take a decision not to allow the renewal to take effect, but I think it's it's worked always well that the outlines are renewed. Um, the applicant has a chance to, and um, the commission has a chance to add more conditions to the the application because of changes in the circumstances. And even though they have submitted a full planning application, they can still submit revisions to that in compliance with the outline. 
it gives the applicant some assurance that a high rise development of some sort is possible. Well, that's the very point that, uh, that that has just been made, that that has to be looked at. Yes, but we can still fine tune the outline at this stage, even though they submitted the full planning application. Can you tell them to use the hand, the hand that feature? Yes. Yeah. Uh, There's an icon on your bars because our problem is that we can't see all of you. Um, and I think yeah. Claire is trying to attract attention, but we can't see you. But if you use your hand, the hand icon, it will come up on the screen and then we should be able to to see you and then know that you want to speak. OK, Sorry. Um, so Claire, the one? Claire wants to speak. Yeah. Carry on, Claire, please. Unmute yourself, Claire. Tell her to unmute yourself. Claire, I think you're on mute. She's still on mute. She's still on mute. Yeah. It's still on mute. Claire, can you see me? Unmute yourself. Look, I'm sorry, I, I can't hear anything at all. No, we, we can't hear Claire at the moment. Um, she seems She's, to be muted yeah, for yeah. some reason. She needs to unmute herself, as in... Claire, are you having problems unmuting yourself? Maybe she could go <laughs> off and join again. Yeah. She's received it, she's unmuted herself. It's not me, it's no, not me. We can we can write in the um, in the in the chats area if she wants. Claire, you could also write in the chats area if you can. Or like Minister Cortez says, leave and then rejoin. Maybe that's a problem. She's seen she's received it. Anybody else? Any other member want to add any other comments whilst we wait for Claire to reconnect? I would just say that um, the preceding <laughs> the preceding comments uh, really are linked to climate change, and the the town planners themselves have publicly acknowledged that uh, we need to start uh, building this in. So whether that's a legal matter or not. The end ultimate aim is to start taking that into account now, today. So I just wanted to add that as I had a chance. Thank you. Yeah, we accept that as well. It's just that we're here to guide the developers on how to submit the application. So if the if we allow them to re, we, we give them a renewed outline, we can then legally tell them through the planning process what is missing now where they can add it on and then they can revise the scheme accordingly yeah what i'm not clear on is that the the letter which was sent in explains that the outline the role of the outline was required in case the full planning application could not be submitted on time as i understood it now that they have submitted on time why is it necessary to review the um basically it's a time factor on their side we are sitting on we are sitting pretty on our side we can just allow the full planning to be considered later on uh we don't we have under no obligation legally to renew an outline it's 
just a process that's always been established by the commission. Um, so, but it helps them to reorientate the, the structure they want to present should they need to. Otherwise, we'll have to wait till we meet subsequently in the year, uh, which will be a long process for us and them awaiting a DPC decision. So the outline may give them indications at this stage to reassess the full planning and submit it before it's considered later on in the year. That's my my perspective on this, yeah? So, and what, when did the outline uh, permission actually expire? Uh, do we know that? This happened during lockdown, yeah? Yeah, I think it was um, a, it was meeting, a meeting we would have had in, in April or May. I think it was the end of March, wasn't it, the permit expired? They have 28 days either side of an expiry date to submit uh, an application for a request for renewal. According to the letter, I read that uh, it would expire later in the month and the letter was submitted on the 2nd of March. Yes. John, you may speak. Thank you. Um, look, uh, I think that I, I understand what you're saying, but um, thinking that the only way to to allow them to alter their plans is by granting an extension of the outline, because that's a way to send a message, I think is a little bit out of date. This uh, meeting is going to be available online, as I think we all know. So the, the people behind this project will clearly be seeing this. Uh, I take this opportunity to say hello to them now. Um, and clearly they will have uh, been able, by seeing this, to pick up the sentiment that there is a concern that things have changed, not just legally, but also because of the manifesto, which is relevant, um, and therefore that they have to have a look at the full planning application in that context. So I, I, I don't think that that is... Uh, I, I agree that there is probably no need now uh, for us to extend this outline. Yeah, so it, no problem. Um, what we would need as planners is reconsideration of factors that have affected the decision, like height, massing. We can talk about the glazing, which can be discussed with the applicants to reduce, and they will be in consultation with people like Gons so that they can have a percentage coverage of that blazing, but are we still happy with that height and character? Well, I, I, if, if I may, I think that is something in when they have been able to take into account what we are saying now, that the law has changed and the government policy has moved, uh, as the Deputy Minister said, in relation to the manifesto. I don't think we can discuss the detail now because of the changes. I, I would agree. I mean, that the background which exists today is different to the background that existed before when the original outline uh, was granted. And although, you know, from what I gather, you may be saying that these manifesto considerations are not, may not be an issue for the Commission, they are issues of government policy and we do think that that's important uh, to take into account. I, I'm sorry, but um, as planners, we are in a disarray situation because we have a, an acceptable public approved development plan, which not is, is not akin to the manifesto anymore. Uh, so as planners, we need some guidance how to decide on this so that we can steer development. And how about now? Is there with a planning application submitted caught up by a manifesto which has gained in time but the development plan is still not prepared which means that we're sitting on a complicated appeal situation should that arise or how to guide developers outside the city walls no i i understand the situation perfectly but but um what what um i mean how do we tell them do we tell them to reduce the height the, the character of the glazing no, no, but what I think the, the, the point that uh, my colleague, uh, Minister Cortes and I are making is that 
the back the background the backdrop or the background against which this application is being considered today is different to the backdrop or the background which was being considered um, at whatever point it happened uh, last year so that that is what 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 has what has changed so if it if if considering this outline today is not necessary because we are only considering it it it's a, on the basis that they may not have had time to submit a full application and given that a full application has been submitted i mean does that in the process render this application superfluous i mean do we need to be considering this particular outline renewal at this particular moment in time if it's already been overtaken uh, by events perhaps if we have some clarity on that we'll be able to um, discuss and agree commission maybe to agree with as a commission you're not obliged to consider it anymore that's true that's a fact okay. i think we have uh, someone that uh, from, uh, uh, Paul, it's but, but, but I have to add that now we have to work on the full planning yeah. application as an obligation in plan. Yeah? So maybe it may be a factor that we may have to bring forward the planning application so that they can consider it and, and the applicant can readdress it under new manifesto requirements. LPS. Uh, Kevin De Los Santos wants to speak, please. Uh, see, in answer to uh, the Chief Minister's comment, I, I believe he is right. If there is, if the danger was that the outline application was going to expire and they wanted to extend it, then I see the reason why we are considering this. But if there has been already a lodged full planning application, I believe that this is superfluous. We just engage in what is the full planning from a, from a legal point of view. That's how I would interpret it. Mm -hmm. uh, also, although they are uh, uh, issues that normally are not important as, as planned. Come again? Um, uh, sorry, uh, this guy, we, we haven't got your clear voice. Can you restart? Sorry. Is it there? Why are you asking to speak? Joseph Garcia, please. Right, th thank you. No, what, what I was going to say is that although these landlord issues are not normally taken on board as uh, planning considerations, uh, I, I should say that uh, there is a reference to them in the letter submitted uh, by the applicant. And for the purposes of clarity, um, let me say that um, when they met or the government as landlord originally, and the first time was probably in 2017, it was made very clear to them that the government would not take responsibility for relocating any existing tenants. So most of the plot is a, a plot uh, that is was purchased or on government on, on private land. There is a, a small section of it which is not uh, private land, which is government land, probably the area around the area of the forecourt. But the relocation of the entities that are there is certainly a discussion to be had. This has not been agreed with the developers and the position of the government has taken in the original meetings has been that the government does not take responsibility for relocating any entities and that that is up to the developer to sort it out with them or to buy them out or to proceed in whatever manner best suits the parties involved. Uh, who's, who's after? Uh, LPS. LPS, somebody in LPS? There's a hand up there from the bottom. Maybe yeah. Who was, who was uh, the LPS? Uh, John Cortez. John Cortez. John Cortez. Yeah, I, 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 I believe uh, I agree with a couple of, of, of you that this is superfluous, that there's no need for us to extend this. But I think the message that the developer must be getting must be clear, and that is that they have to engage with you following uh, the new ethos of, of, of the Green Gibraltar Manifesto, um, hopefully to work on whatever their full planning application is, and I haven't seen it, so I have no idea what it is, uh, in order to make that conform to that and to my first point this morning, which was the new law on energy efficiency. That is my view. 
I think it, it seems that the consensus is that, that it, you did, don't want to approve the outline because of the fact that the full planning application has been submitted. And if that's the case, I would suggest that we decline the request to renew it and we focus our efforts on the full planning application and make on obviously making sure that the applicants are aware of the the the, the new context and what you know that you everyone's been referring to um i would have thought that's the simplest way of doing it we are not under no legal obligation to renew the permits no. the law doesn't require us to do so we've observed your views which are new to the game as opposed to when it was decided two years ago um, and so we can work on the full planning application but probably we bring it forward so that we can discuss as a commission and allow the applicant to revisit the, the scheme should they need to before taking a final decision we've done that before in, in other schemes rather than take a decision at the end of the day, if that's okay with the membership. Um, <laughs> sounds sensible to me. Yeah, on the point of land as well. Speak, uh, speak. Yeah, uh, yeah one, one more moment, uh, Janet. Okay. On the point of land that Minister DCM remarked on, um, it's important on our side that if land is not available from the government's point of view or not decided yet, it may still affect the, the full planning application anyway. So the scheme may have may alter in the full planning application, which means that it may fall apart or uh, may majorly re reconsider totally. So it's a even though landlord's consent is not our concern, the land on which it's been built is our concern. So if the footprint is being reconsidered, uh, that's important. So it's relevant to us. Janet? Yes, I just wanted to ask um, about the criteria that uh, a green Gibraltar will have on planning um, and if this can be given some articulation so that apart from the legal energy status of, of this large building, we also can understand what other measures we should be applying going forward, not just on this project, but on other projects. Um, and I think a criteria is quite important. I'm sure you read the manifesto, Janet. <laughs> I have, but how do the planners use that? That's what I'm talking about. The, yeah. the only tool that planners have to convert manifestos into planning is the development plan pro process because that clearly states all the planning issues for Gibraltar, which we'll be working on through the tender process um, in the current year and hopefully bring it forward faster than expected because developments are coming faster than ever before and we need to bring it forward because of the decision-making process being affected by it. So I'm sorry, but uh... Exactly. You know, the, the, the projects, there's never a, a lack of projects or speed of projects. But if we really want to take hold of it and apply a different way of doing things, which we all agree is necessary regarding climate change, then we have to update the methodology that you use at planning, the, the, the framework that you use. And I wonder if government can, um, because of the, the new development plan is still some way off. And if you're going to wait for that, then there will be lots of other projects coming through that are going to have this legal challenge um, for those of us wanting to improve the climate uh, uh, status of them. And exactly, the government will feed its input into the development plan. That input will obviously be a reflection of the new policy. And I'm sure in the meantime, the Department of the Environment will be happy to to provide some some guidance but let me say also that there are elements which relate to land use as well in the sense that you know, when you are dealing with affordable housing for our people the criteria may be more flexible than when you're dealing with a private development uh, which is a at the end of the day a for-profit one so we need to make sure that there is a public gain and we need to make sure that the new uh, green water policies are reflected in whatever emerges I mean, put apart the decision, I mean, Paul and I and the planners will 
de definitely work on the scheme with the applicants and we'll anticipate all the green and environmentally friendly issues that you raised and work on the height and character of the building no matter what. Um, I think we should now rest this application to aside. We will not renew the plan application. The applicant will get a sort of resume of our discussions through the planning process. And, and I'm sure they'll pick up uh, the more important factors of this so that they can redesign if they need to the full planning application. Okay. Um, if that's okay with you guys, uh, we'll move on to item five, which is the Insus Hall lift project. Do I have your support on that current application for double stand, please? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Go to discuss things that way sometimes. Five, please. I insert four. Okay. So th this is uh, Inces Hall or the courtyard of the Inces Hall and it's a government project to install um, an external lift to the actual hall itself. It's located in the southwest corner of the courtyard adjacent to the existing or unexisting staircase which leads up to the to the first floor. Um, these are just pictures of um, Photograph, sorry, of the existing existing situation. Um, essentially, it will be located in this area here. So, if we move on to the plans, um, this is the existing plan, ground floor plan, and this is the proposed ground floor plan. Uh, it's an external lift which will be about seven meters in height. Um, it's physically separated from the the building itself. Um, you can see here on, on this ground floor plan, it's located adjacent to the existing staircase. Um, there will be a need to re relocate an existing tree, um, which is currently located there. And the proposal is for a steel structure, there's a montage on the bottom right of your screen at the moment, um, for a steel structure which would match as far as possible in character to the existing steel work around the building, so it basically be black, black steel work. Um, and then it, the lift itself will be clad in translucent uh, glass, glass panels. And on the first floor, there'll be a small glass curtain screen um, and a roof canopy leading from the lift into the, the building itself. Um, these are just some more elevation, elevational details of the proposal and some sections through it. But I'll take it back to the montage, which is probably the easiest to, to understand. Um, the Department of Environment comments was that the lift should be a zero energy lift. Um, and also they made reference to the fact that although this doesn't reach the roof, if uh, any contractor needs to be careful because um, they need to ensure that no scaffolding or any other kind of structure used during the construction of the lift affects any bats or, or swift nests that may exist on the roof. Um, the Ministry for Heritage have welcomed the design and location of the lift as it is away from the building um, and obviously therefore reversible in, in the future um, and they consider it a sympathetic development. They would however require an archaeological watching brief um, for any groundworks. Uh, we've got no other comments from departments uh, the application was, although it's a government project under the new legislation, it was subject to public participation and we had no comments from anyone uh, in respect of the public. Yeah, no okay. um, I think Claire is asking to to say something. So Claire, do you want to jump in at this stage? Um, does my microphone work now? Yeah. Okay. Uh, I think it was a team before. Um, just in terms of the lift, um, I know this has been an issue for a long time and many options have been looked at over many, many years. 
Um, the trust is happy with the location of the lift. We think that there's, we agree that there's no other place that it could go. The, and also the, the design um, and the way that it's um, re totally reversible. Um, I did send some comments in, but I think they might have been um, a bit late for inclusion in your report. Um, the, we would accept the installation of the lift, um, obviously with the ex um, excavation um, archaeological watching brief, but we feel that the curtain wall on the first floor at the lift exit is excessive and it actually um, undoes what you're trying to achieve with the lift in like making it um, light. Um, if someone's the aim of that curtain wall is to protect from the elements, but if someone's already crossed the courtyard, just a very short crossing into the building, um, we feel that the curtain the curtain wall won't actually do very much, and we would request that that be removed from the application. Mice would like to speak. Uh, my point on the lift and the experience of the lift in uh, St. Bernard's Hospital is that the architect engineers should ensure that it's appropriately ventilated so it doesn't create a greenhouse effect and then we have air conditioning being incorporated into the lift above the structure. Um, so I, I recommend the Commission supports that that it's properly ventilated and we don't have accretions later on cropping up as well. Uh, Minister Cortes and LPS. Minister Cortes, please. Yeah, um, yeah. I, I don't think the, the air conditioning would be a problem. I agree. Uh, it's usually going to be used in the evening, so I don't think it's going to, to get too hot. And the fact that the glass isn't clear should also uh, reduce that. Um, uh, this is obviously a project of the Ministry for Culture, so I, I have no problem with agreeing with Claire on the removal of that uh, link between the lift uh, and the main building. So I think we can take it that that's going to be a recommendation that is reasonable and will be acceptable. Thank you. We have someone from LPS. LPS, uh, somebody from LPS. Meeting room, please. Uh, Paul, I agree with what Claire has mentioned um, of the, the, the canopy. I don't believe that you need one, especially when you've just crossed the whole courtyard. Um, but I think my two, two opinions is that I know that we've gone down the route of glass lifts, and this is usually to expose the monuments which is behind, usually stone walls. In this particular case, we've got a whole facade which has had graffiti over it. How about having a street art on the very shaft of the lift instead of glass, so you don't have the problem of, um, of the greenhouse effect, and you can probably reduce the costs by about £50,000 by replacing it with a cladding. No, worse than the graffiti. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have, uh, Garcia, Mr. Garcia, please. Yes, sir. I just want to say a couple of things. First of all, yeah, I think it's wonderful to see finally the lift at Inters Hall coming to fruition. This has gone on for many years and spanned, I think, different uh, administrations. And certainly, I mean, I, I agree with the point uh, made in relation to, to the person and that connection there. And um, it, it will say it will be a huge benefit to certain members of the community, particularly those who are disabled and with mobility issues. So uh, well done to my colleague and to those who have worked on this to bring it to fruition. Wanted to say something? No. Okay. Um, does anybody want to cling on to Carl's suggestion of cladding and graffiti? I just would have been curious to see what other designs you looked at, um, appreciating that this was probably the best one, but it does look rather dark to me compared to the lightness of the building, but no doubt uh, the best of the crop, no? Well, the thing with the glass is that two elements there, if it's clear glass, then it's um, going to get hotter, and it's also a danger for birds flying into it, and particularly in an area where there are swifts nesting nearby. Um, the question of cladding, possibly, uh, I'm not sure about the graffiti, it's so controversial that I don't think I'd want to go there, um, but uh, I mean, it, it's certainly something that can, can be looked at. What, what I wouldn't like it to do is delay the project, which is well overdue, and, and we want to get, um, uh, as soon as COVID uh, goes away uh, enough, we want to get, obviously, the stage being used again, and we want it to be used uh, used by by all members of the community. 
Um, so I think we can look at it, um, but you know, I think it is the best that that has been available. Okay, uh, I think. Just, yeah. okay. just want to say one thing. Um, these. This, this is a government project, so what we're, we're doing under the new legislation is granting planning permission. It's not like the previous ones where we could give various recommendations and then they could be considered or not considered. So what we issue or what we're dis deciding is whether to grant planning permission with or without conditions. So if there are, it needs to be, what I'm trying to say is it needs to be clear what we're granting permission for. Um, so, like in relation to the cladding, for example, it needs to be clear whether we're approving this, or if we need something else, then we will be requesting um, revise a revised scheme to be submitted. Okay, we've got someone from NPS and the uh, Minister of First, please. I, 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 I would just like to uh, lend my support to Carl's suggestion re regarding the cladding. Um, I. I I take the point regarding the the graffiti, but I think that for, for birds, cladding is even better than even if it's dark glass. We've had collisions at Commonwealth Park. We had a, a kingfisher sign a few months ago, for example. So there's no question that for birds, cladding would be better than glass. Um, Mr. Mr. Cortez. Unmute yourself. Minister Cortez, unmute yourself, please. Yeah, uh, I'm, I'm not sure whether the, I knew about the Kingfisher, but I thought that had been on the clear glass around the bandstand. Anyway, that's that's not a point. Um, uh, I, I think you need to, to think about the cladding, and if that's a condition, then clearly that would be done. Um, but you need to think about what it would look like. It would presumably just be painted in the same color uh, I, I wouldn't like to go down the graffiti way, and that perhaps could be added on later in the way that we're doing street arts uh, around Gibraltar. You have to then think of that painted in the same color as Ainsley's Hall. If the majority prefer that to the glass, then fine, that will be done. You have Claire who wants to come. Claire? No, I, 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 I strongly oppose any cladding on the, on the left. I think it would make it much more visible um i take the point about birds i think maybe i don't know keith you probably know more about this and what deters birds i've seen in, in northern european countries for example where they put stickers of birds on windows i don't know apparently that's meant to to stop that to help that um but i think um any cladding and or graffiti i think in, in the case and vicinity of um heritage buildings less is more I think if I may, um, I think I agree with uh, Claire's view there. Um, one possibility that you could help on both sides is you could possibly have some kind of um, vinyl signage applied to the glass as well. So, for example, maybe Inces Hall name, you know, the name of Inces Hall on it or a logo of, of some description, something like that to, to make it more obvious, but without affecting the visibility of the building itself. Have someone from LPS. LPS. Yeah, no, no, just to just to um, agree with Claire that deterrents are certainly possible. Deterrents. Oh, okay. Okay, can I steer the commission then to take a decision? I think there's a general consensus to glass. Do we want to take a vote on that? No. 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 Okay. So if glass is approved unanimously we could add the condition that vinyl signage or uh, illustrations or maybe the arts or drama into the blazing could be studied um, and totally remove the curtain wall walkway at personal level can we all vote on that i support that unanimous. is it unanimous yeah yeah thank you excellent yeah. well done so move so it's approved with glass, opaque glass, with uh, certain elements of stickers, so that's representing the drama festival or whatever, and um, zero energy efficient lifts, and no walkway with cladding. Thank you. Okay. We move on to minor works uh, and any other matters. Sorry. Hector, no, uh, sorry. Speak. Hector, you may speak. 
Paul, just just a quick question. When you say you're removing the the curtain walling, does it include obviously the roof above? No. Yes, yes. Uh, okay. It would be similar to the. There's, you see the photograph at the end where you have an open gangway. There's no difference. Yeah. 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 Okay. Cool. That's fine. Yeah. Thank you. The, the, the tree's not there, but obviously I'm sure John will have um, uh, inspected that very carefully, no? Yeah, it will be relocated within the, the courtyard. Thank you. Can we put that as a condition, John? Yes, absolutely. absolutely. Like we do for normal ply applications, okay? Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Okay, minor and other works, please. Item six and seven, any issues on those two items, please? Any issues on delegated powers? We've decided on 40 items. Um, meticulously, the subcommittee has been working despite lockdown. We've done Zooming, no? Was it Zooming? Zooming. It's been very successful. You know, meeting Claire face to face at the office is better. Uh, but we've achieved a lot of work in the meantime, and permits have been issued, and the uh, building process has continued regardless of COVID-19. Um, does any other member want to say anything? I want to thank Hamza here on the side, who's been excellent in compiling all this IT data work uh, so that we can meet virtually. Um, it's been very different. I like to see you face to face, uh, but it's also an experience to record. Any members want to say, add anything else? Otherwise, we call it a day. You can move, uh, to see. What? move the screen. Huh? Just a question. Um, are we likely to meet soon and will it be the same format? Is that your plan? Is that your thinking? Well, I was actually going to ask for any feedback from members on how you felt this this went. Um, at this end, we have had some difficulties at this end and it's difficult because we can't see all of you at the same time. So we need to see if there's a way around that. Um, but we were going to ask what your feedback was. Uh, our general thinking at the moment is that we in this kind of format, you can't do too many applications because it is actually quite difficult. Um, but possibly depending on you know how people feel we could possibly do more frequent meetings um in this format but with the with possibly only two or three applications each time i don't know how how members feel about that minister cortez would like to come minister cortez yeah thank you um uh yes uh yeah, thank you for everybody who's put this together. I was going to ask a related question, but I'll give my comment on this. From a public health perspective, I would uh, not meet in person for a little while longer. Um, I like to err on the side of caution without going into details. You know, the border with Spain has just opened recently. Tourism is going to start from Spain within the next week or so. So I would be cautious for a few weeks at least. So I think we should plan to keep them virtual at least till unlock and possibly till September. That's my own view from the public health angle. Um, on, the, on the question of um, length of meetings, I think that short, sharp meetings like this more frequently are more effective. Um, so I would rather meet even every two weeks or even at a pinch every week, knowing that it's going to be an hour and a half or two hours max. Uh, than spending most of a day in the Macintosh Hall, no matter how pleasant that is to see you all. That is my view while we're going through this at the moment. Yes, I, I, I would agree with everything that um, my colleague has said. I think, uh, first of all, public health considerations are paramount. That's why we're here. We find ourselves here today in this format. I think it's going very well. There will be teething technical issues as we ourselves get used to the technology and as applicants and and uh, others objectors also get used to the technology as well but i think it, it had it has worked uh, very well. one point I, I would say is that um we need to get some kind of stopwatch to make sure that people stick to the three minutes and perhaps in this format it's easier to control that than it is in the in the other uh, pub, public uh, format yeah i'm certainly happy to have more frequent meetings in this format to so we can do 
our business in a more regular way rather than once a month as we used to before. And I understand from my colleague Albert Isola for planning and for digital services that uh, a second phase is now coming which will allow the public to connect directly to meetings of the DPC so the public will not be miss out any, missing out in any way and also the media to be able to connect as well. But I think it's, it's positive, it's a new way of doing things, it's different. I think we just need to get used to the technology. Thank you all very much for getting it together. Claire, I wanted to say something. Claire? Yeah, well, my, my, um, the minister just answered my question. It was going to be on the public participation angle, but he just confirmed that that would be coming. And I think it's really important that the public can see this happening live rather than a recording afterwards. How do we do that? Well, I can you have to come here. No, we're yeah. working on a... OK, we'll be working with in the background to have streaming. Is that the right word? Yeah. yeah. Um, hopefully, if not the next one, uh, the, the subsequent meeting will be done streamed and uh, hopefully be a inverted comma smooth ride visually yeah, and vocally. Thank you. Have a nice day and uh, enjoy your weekend. Bye. Thank you. Thank you all. Bye. What do we need to do to stream?